Hi, my name is Shalini DeMello, and I am a Principal Research Scientist in the Learning and Perception Research Group at NVIDIA. I work primarily on computer vision and machine learning. And uh, today I'm going to describe to you a number of tips and tricks that I use to optimize the training of one of my recent uh, deep learning based algorithms called Phase, which is on few shot adaptive gaze estimation. And uh, I did this work jointly together with Sankuk Lim and Dusan Stosik, both of whom are GPU architects in NVIDIA's GPU architecture team. So first let me describe to you what Phase does. It's an application that is designed to train neural networks to be able to adapt them at test time to particular subjects using very few training or calibration samples of each subject. There's two main components to phase. One is to learn a low dimensional representation for the gaze and head pose, and the other one is to train using this representation a meta learning algorithm which can be adapted in a few shot manner without overfitting at test time. You can find out more about this application in our published ICCV 2019 paper and you can also check out the code for phase on the NVLab's GitHub page. So one of the main components of phase is to train a decoding transforming encoder decoder architecture. And what this architecture is designed to do is to learn the low dimensional gaze and head pose representation, which is then used for the downstream task of gaze estimation. So for this architecture, we use a DenseNet encoder and decoder backbone, and we train it on a very large data set of 1.8 million images from the gaze capture MIT data set. And this training of DTED is the most computationally expensive part of our entire phase algorithm and uh, takes up about 90% of the time of training. So once trained, what the DTED algorithm is able to do is to able, it is able to take an input image um, and along with a target gaze or head pose value and it is able to produce an output image in which the gaze and the, or the head pose is redirected to the target values. So what you see here from left to right is redirection of the gaze up, down, left, right, and of the head pose up and down and left and right. So in order to train DTED faster, uh, we applied a bunch of optimizations during training and I'm going to describe those next, but before I do that, I'll describe our hardware as well as our baseline configuration. So as our hardware, we trained on NVIDIA GP DGX nodes containing 8 V100 GPUs, either with 16 or 32 GPUs of memory. We use PyTorch as our uh, deep learning framework. Uh, we trained on all 8 GPUs using the data parallel package as our baseline, and we distributed a batch size of 2048 images across all the 8 GPUs using data parallel. Uh, the image size was 64 by 256, both at the input as well as the output of the encoder-decoder architecture. So there were four main things that we used to speed up training. The first was to use mixed precision training using the NVIDIA Apex package. The second was to replace data parallel with the distributed data parallel package from PyTorch. The third was to use optimized implementations of the SGD optimizer algorithm that are available through Apex. And the last one was to use convolutional um, algorithm auto-tuning, which is available through the CUDA NN package. So first, let's look at the mixed precision training. So the NVIDIA mixed precision training package allows you to train different parts of your uh, pipeline using 16 or 32 bits of precision. And in our case, we enabled it using the Apex package, which can be downloaded and installed via PIP. Um, however, note that starting from PyTorch 1.6, AMP is going to be supported natively within PyTorch. So once uh, AMP is installed or Apex is installed on your machine, you can import it simply from uh, Apex by importing AMP. Then the next step to uh, using it in your code is to wrap both your network as well as your optimizer and instantiate it using AMP. And the last step is to, uh, min in order to maintain a precision during reduce operations in a, and to scale your loss appropriately so that your accuracy is not affected, um, you wrap the um, 
the loss uh, backward operation with the scaled version of the lamp uh, of the loss using AMP. So how did that affect our training time? So basically, with a baseline configuration, we were training with 26.3 hours, but by adding AMP, we went down to 20 hours, which is about a 1.3x speed up, which is great. So the next trick that we used was to replace data parallel with the distributed data parallel pa package from PyTorch. So the difference between data parallel and distributed data parallel is that while data parallel uses a single CPU process to distribute your data across multiple GPUs, distributed data parallel instead uses multiple CPU processes to manage each of your GPUs in your DGX nodes. And um, the, the way that you can apply this in your own code is to specifically first import uh, packages that allow you to distribute both your data as well as your model. And uh, the second step to enabling this in your code is to instantiate multiple CPU processes. And note that you can do this on a single node machine, or you can apply the same sort of distributed data parallel pack package to train across multiple nodes with more than eight GPUs. The next step in applying DDP to your code is to basically wrap your network as well as your data samplers um, to be able to distribute both your network weights as well as your data across the eight GPUs. And then everything is handled pretty much seamlessly via PyTorch. The only other thing, two things to note, is that if you ever wanted to print out your losses for the purposes of logging or visualization or TensorBoard, then you'd, you'd uh, have to use a special command to reduce all the um, loss values across the different GPUs. And then the last thing to note is that you uh, actually need to use a special command to launch your Python code in which you specify that you're going to be using uh, the distributed data parallel paradigm um, as well as specify the number of processes that you want to launch. So what did that get us in terms of training time? So basically we started out at 26.3 hours for training for our baseline. That went down to 20 hours by the addition of AMP and that further went down to 13.1 hours by replacing data parallel with distributed data parallel, which is a huge win. But basically, we reduced our training time by 2x. So the next trick that we used was to use fused SGD. Now what fused SGD does is, is basically an optimized version of the SGD optimizer that's available. And uh, in order to uh, speed up training, what it does is that it combines a lot of element-wise operations that are applied in CUDA kernels uh, into one operation, such that it reduces, uh, you know, like going to memory uh, and back multiple times for each of those element-wise operations. And using it in your code is super simple you simply import the fused SGD optimizer from the Apex package and use that just as you would have used the normal SGD that you imported from PyTorch with the same, um, you know, passed in parameters, uh, but simply use the fused SGD instead of the SGD. So did that help in terms of training time? Yes, a little bit. Um, so we basically went from 13.1 hours with the distributed data parallel to about 12.9 hours, um, and it, it led to a small, tiny bit improvement. However, note that your application might be different, and depending on uh, you know, how much time is spent in various parts of your training code, uh, you might be able to get more or less speed up using the optimized version of SGD. So the last thing that we um, did was to enable uh, auto-tuning of the most optimized implementation of convolutional algorithms um, uh, by, that are implemented by CUDA NN. And uh, this can be turned on with a very simple command where uh, you, know, you, you turn the CUDA NN's benchmark mode into true. And what it does is for your particular ac application, it analyzes the various implementations of the convolutional algorithms that are available in CUDA NN and picks the ones that would be the most efficient in terms of timing. And so how did we improve further? Um, a tiny bit more. So we went from 12.9 hours to 12.7 hours um, by enabling this auto-tuning. And so effectively, 
in comparison to our baseline, we basically went from 26.3 hours for the unoptimized version of our training code to 12.7 hours, which is a 12.2.07 um, speed up by enabling all these optimizations. So the next thing that I wanted to show you was the improvement in the memory utilization that I achieved by enabling all these optimizations. So my baseline configuration used 25 GBs of memory on the NVIDIA DGX node for each GPU. However, um, by simply by enabling AMP, I was able to reduce that down to 13 GBs. And that, that was unaffected by using DDP or Fused SGD. However, by uh, enabling auto-tuning, that went up slightly to 15 GBs, um, which is because of the fact that the auto-tuning algorithm has to run an optimization to find the best implementations for your particular training script. Nonetheless, this is really great because I was able to achieve a 1.6x reduction in memory consumption during training, which enabled me to run my scripts on 16 GB NVIDIA DGX machines as opposed to 32 GB machines. And the last thing that I wanted to show you was how this affected the accuracy for my particular application, which was essentially that it was unchanged. So what I show here is the gaze error along the y-axis, which is as a function of the number of calibration samples along the x-axis from 0 to 256 that I used for each subject um, while fine-tuning or calibrating the algorithm for them during test time. And in blue is the curve for the case when we don't use any of the training optimizations. And uh, here, note that it is error, so the lower the curve is, the better it is. And in orange is the case when we turned on mixed precision along with the baseline. And in green is the case when we turned on all the other optimizations, including using distributed data parallel, using the Fuse SGD optimizer, as well as the auto-tuning for the convolutional algorithms. And what you find is that all curves are basically within standard error, and the accuracy was unaffected. So to summarize, for my particular application, over the baseline of training with data parallel on eight GPUs, with the addition of AMP, the replacing the data parallel package with the distributed data parallel package and using the Fuse SGD optimizers, as well as using optimized versions of the uh, CUDA convolutional algorithms from CUDA NN and via auto tuning. All of these optimizations were super helpful in my code, and uh, with all of them enabled, I was able to reduce the training time by nearly by two times. I was able to reduce the memory used while training by 1.6x, and there was virtually no change in performance or accuracy of my algorithm. So this is really cool, and I was very impressed by um, how, how much efficiency I was able to achieve in training, and I would really encourage you to uh, consider applying some of these tricks in your code to use your GPU time much more efficiently when you're training and do more great research. Lastly, if you'd like to find out more about how to apply these optimizations in your own um, training scripts, you can check out my GitHub code for the phase algorithm uh, at the NV Labs GitHub page. Also, I'd be happy to take any questions if you have any, so feel free um, to contact me on Twitter, for example. And I'd like to conclude by saying thank you for your attention, and I hope that you were able to learn some useful tricks today to optimize your training scripts as well.